was that song? That, that was like for me to cue record. Oh shit! <laughs> that sounds crazy. Good evening, my brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry for that hand clap. Was it like loud? <laughs> it sounded like something got shocked. It sounded like you got shocked. No, nah, no. Nah, I was just clapping to cue record, my brother. Yes, you fresh off a Joburg aircraft. You were surrounded by toddlers. Yeah. <laughs> How was the flight, bro? No, actually, it was a good one. I I I really like enjoy flights to be honest because um, I get to read. I think that's like the only time I really get to read. What are you reading at the moment? Uh, just vintage Vogue magazines and um, like I w- we were talking about before, um, attached the Tashin Icons book. Um, this one not on chairs but on minimal design, and I was hardly reading. I was just admiring. Know the interiors and stuff. Is that where like your all of your references come from? From like printed media? Because I mean, you do you're going, have. You going straight <laughs> for it? You going straight to it? I mean, <laughs> you went straight to we, it. We might as well poke at it because I, w- I would. I would mm. say. Um, so it's definitely a starting point for me. Mm. Um, it's, it's a place for me to kind of um, get an alternative, you know, exposure to something. Um, something that I've, you know, I, I, I speak a lot to my friends about is like changing your points of reference and shifting the, um, shifting what um, informs your work. You know what I mean? Um, obviously, like we all use Pinterest, we all use TikTok. Not maybe not all of us, but I use TikTok. And I think I don't think there's anything wrong. With okay, TikTok. so what what is then the constructive use of of TikTok? Wait, wait. Before we before we, before we get before there, we digress, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Clarify first. Yeah, so the Pinterest, mm. the TikToks, all of all, everyone, everyone's on there, and it's mm. everyone's reference. You mm. know what I mean? So people are always struggling to sort of shift away from what's popular, and how are you going to shift away from what's popular if you're consuming like the same thing that everyone else is consuming and your point of reference is the same as everyone else's point of reference. Um, being able to, for me personally, like read a vintage magazine, it's like the path for me to get to this vintage magazine is like unprecedented. You know what I mean? Like I found this, it's not like this specific like Dated magazine, just for example, it's a 1990, 1998 British Vogue. For that specific month of that specific magazine to be at that specific market mm. or charity store, mm. that's a, that was a, that's a time capsule, mm. and I'm able to consume that time capsule. And there's no algorithm that's mm. pushing me towards there, mm. and through that, I'm getting a fresh like fertile i would mm. say fertile you know point of reference mm. no one else is getting it mm. even if even if you're into like vintage vogues and stuff it's like who's to say you're going to get that month mm. that year that edition that country you know so that's that's <laughs> <laughs> no i get you because off camera we were talking about like how on a pinterest or on a TikTok, like all of these mood boards and 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 furniture or like things of interest seem so unattainable. Yeah. But then you have an individual like yourself who is truly passionate about like you know all of these things, um, adamantly make an effort to get them in a tangible um, print, you know. And you get these through markets. And for you to go to a market, you have to love it, bro, because it's like treasure hunting yeah. in a, in essence. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I really, um, that's like probably another thing beyond like the magazines. It's like Mm. the market inspires me. Um, Andy Warhol used to go to the flea markets on Sundays when they were closing, not to buy anything, but just to be inspired. Wow. You know, and that's something that I do. But I don't go at the end of the day. I go in the morning. Morning. Like, I I leave my girl in the bed. (laughs) (laughs) Where are you going? I'm just gonna go to no, the no, flea market. She knows, uh. she knows. She knows. She'll meet me there uh. half an hour later. Mm. Yeah. What? And I think, like, 
I get why flea market is such a big thing for you because you come from a, a city where, you know, flea markets and um, barrels and thrifting culture is such a big thing. Um, I think for us as Cape Tonians, is what we call thrifting or what we call markets, it's sort of like considered and curated. So it feels like, a, it feels less like a market, but more of like, a, I don't know, curated space. Mm. And that could sort of like inflate prices in very unrealistic ways. Yeah. But I feel like what I love about the city of Joburg is that like, bro, it's just a melting pot of whatever the market is as is. And you can come across like rare finds, like vintage Vogue magazines, yeah. um, books on chairs, um, icon books on chairs. That's, and that's, that's just, the, that's just, just the a, beginning. Do you know what I'm saying? The books is, the the books be, is the just beginning. the beginning. You know, <laughs> even clothes, like whatever. I think like yeah. how has the accessibility of like Joburg influenced your creative process? Be, before we start that, um, I think maybe we can start, like we can talk rather on the conversation mm. of like, what you spoke about about Cape Town, I'm yes. interested. I think in the like what you say, the idea that Cape Town doesn't have that. How you say what? What did you, what did you say exactly? In Cape like, Town, it's it's well curated. Well curated. Yeah. There isn't a, a, a foraging space, mm. but I think there is, and I actually I know there is. Let's speak about but it. But I think it's a lot more secretive, and it's a lot more protected. Because, um, I mean, where does Hopeful Thrift get their clothes from? They're from Cape Town, right? They're from Cape Town. And they get, like, crazy thrift finds, you know? I mean, that's, like, from personal relationships, good friends, knowing where to go. I don't think we have a... We can't go to downtown Joburg and a barrel is open in front of us and we'll get, like, vintage Prada pieces, vintage Dior. Like, yeah. we don't have that accessibility. Oh, no, of, of course. I mean, the, the scale is, is a lot yeah, larger yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in Joburg. In but, Joburg, but yeah. But I do think that there is the, the... the How you say the, the resale um, market. Mm. You can get things affordably. It's just, I think... People are also more aware in Cape Town mm. of these things. Like, where the hell are it's you? It's the awareness. Awareness. It's a, it's and it's similar to when I was in Paris and we I went to a thrift store. I was like I'm trying to find shit, but I can't find anything because I realized in Paris everybody knows everything. It's not even about like. Wow. It's not even about like the trend that mm. the trend. There's of the time of the time it's mm. about the trend of before mm. and it's the trend that's going to become a trend wow people in paris already know mm. that shit so mm. you won't even find like you know something which is obscure mm. in in joburg and sometimes i guess in cape town you can find something which is maybe you won't find the trend trend thing you know like you won't nowadays you won't find um montclair jacket stone island or you won't find, you know, the ACGs because people are aware of it. Mm. But you might find something more left field, mm. like unbranded military cargoes. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, because that's even though they are like a bit popular, or whatever, whatever. But it's like you actually need to consider. It, you know, it's not like seeing a label and being like, "That's fire! I'm gonna cop! I'm gonna cop it!" Cop it, yeah. But in in Paris, it's like. Everybody knows that shit. So. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I think the, the I think you hit it on the nail there when you spoke about awareness. In Cape Town, people are definitely aware. Yeah. In a Joe Book Prim is not that much because like there's an abundance of what like, you know, mm. this like thrifting culture is and you like won't, you won't find a thirty five millimeter in Cape Town for cheap, you know. You know what I mean? I think that's like a that's like a good sort of um like ratio mm. in terms of um, how you could consider things. How what is the price of it? What is the how much are you gonna pay for a thirty-five millimeter camera in your city? 
That's the amount of awareness. Damn, that's crazy, <laughs> bro. There's shit. no more you, film in in inside, bro. In like, there's no more film inside, and like that is like a great example of like what pop culture can do. You know what I'm saying? It starts off really tiny, and then it grows into a, a bigger culture of people, yeah. and it becomes like you know this mm. thing that Bella everybody want to do. It, that uses it. Or you know whatever. what I'm saying? And then it becomes a frequent thing. But then this brings me to my next question, which I didn't think we we're gonna touch on this early but since we're speaking about like tools because i mean 35 millimeter is a tool right mm -hmm. what is the science of the vhs camcorder bro mm. so it it ties back to, to what we we're talking about um about the market you know what i mean uh my f the first time i use it like you know people say vhs but it isn't actually VHS most of the time. It's what? actually it's actually high eight, video eight, um, or digital eight, and then there's VHS C, but you hardly get VHS cameras. Mm. If, you, if you see like a v the only VHS cameras are like those big ones. Mm. Um, I actually kind of want I want like an original. Mm. That's what I'm looking for right now. But <coughs> the like. High eight, those that sort of lineage of cameras. Um, the first time I used one was just like my dad's old one, and I think that's how it happens for a lot of us. It's like we just use what's available, and it's not even in like a necessarily creative sense. It's just like I want to mm. try this out. You know, this seems quite cool. I don't know how it works. I want to try to figure it out. It's most likely broken for some reason, but you know, you try it out. And then the first one I got was in 2017 at the Emerentia Sunday Market. RIP to that market. That was the first market that I ever went to. Like it, ex it exposed me to market culture. It exposed it exposed me to like just you know the heritage and quality of goods you can get from a secondhand market. Mm. And I used to go there. That was like my you, that was like my every day, every, mm. every not every day, but my routine. Uh, last Sunday of the month, I take a walk up to the Emerentia Market, mm. and you know, at the time I was obviously also staying at my parents, so I wasn't considering like interior things. But it, I wish I, I was like, I wish I bought some of the things. Cause mm. Like I, I took a lot of photos, and I was like. I can't could have used that in my apartment. Mm. Could have used that for my apartment. But one of the days I saw like a high eight video camera and I was like, okay, that looks crazy. And, and it was like, the guy was selling it for like 300 grand. Wow. Which was, you know, I was like, okay, that's, that's a lot of money at the time for mm. me as well. Mm. It's like, okay, am I going to do it? Mm. Mm. I went back and forth. I walked back home, thought about it. And then, I decided I'm just going to go get it. And I bought it. And I haven't used that camera once, like since I've gotten it, because it didn't work. Wow. <laughs> and you paid 300 bucks, bro. Damn. And, it, and, it, cause, and, it, and, it, and I haven't used it once because it doesn't work. Sure. It, or it does work, actually, most mm. likely. It's just mm. I can't find a charger for mm. it. But the thing is, that's the story. Mm. With a lot of, like, a lot of, like, just trying out something new mm. it's like you're gonna buy it or you're gonna get it mm. you're not sure what's gonna happen mm. but you gotta try it out at least mm. my favorite point and shoot camera is a point and shoot camera that i wouldn't have thought would have been my favorite you know for mm. example like the i use like this weird olympus hybrid mm. you know i no one online is talking about this camera that mm. uh, you know i just bought it because it looked it looked pretty mm. but now that's like that's like my favorite camera mm. and it works, you know, mm. if it didn't work, I wouldn't use it for sure. You know what I mean, but, da, 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 but, but because it works and I got to utilize it and figure out what worked. And there's even like other cameras that, which, which people say are better than this camera, but I like that camera, you know what I mean? And it's cause I tried it out. That's the most important thing. And that attachment is forever. Yeah. That, that, that broken camera, the one that I've, the first one I bought is still in my parents' house. And I'm maybe one day, Maybe one day. That's beautiful, I'll bro. May, I'll get it to work. But at this point, you know, it's it's a relic. Mm. It's a relic. And it's 
it's it's it's that's like the nature of how I think we should do things creatively, mm. cons- as a consumer, mm. as a academics, you know, as lovers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is so corny. <laughs> I hear you, bro. I hear yeah, you. I hear you. Just need to try it, try it out, and mm. you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. For sure. It's so I want to take it back, bro, um, way, way back, like <laughs> childhood back, like loving video games for the first time back with your older brother, Roberto. Like, bro, before anything else, you love playing video games How first. How do you know that? Bro, like you keep forgetting like, ish, I won't go into depth on like how I know that, but like I, I yeah, that's not important. <laughs> okay, no, let me, it's not even that deep actually. Um, I think few years ago might have been 2018 um we were putting together this event and we needed a poster designer this might have oh been my God. Yeah, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i won't get it deep no, I, yeah, remember, yeah. I remember okay yeah that's so crazy that is crazy hey yeah life is crazy um so yeah bro take me back to those moments with your older brother bro like a lot of people don't know that he's like the geek that made you like yeah. the things you like Yo, that's so that's so crazy, cause um yeah he is genuinely he's a geek he's a real geek and he when he loves something you know he'll he'll like even to a toxic level just give everything to it. So we we used to we we were obsessed with video games as as like kids. I think um, the first time the first like sort of gaming situation that we got into was via PC. I think PC gaming is just... Bro. You know, even, like, before, like, you say, like, not even, like, to say, like, oh, like, cultish PC gaming, but, like, those kids that didn't have gaming consoles, mm. they only had a PC, mm. and those are the games you were playing because mm. you had a PC. Mm. But because you had a PC, it was exposing... Because you were playing games on PC, it was exposing you to, like, left-field games, you know, because the mainstream titles were, like, on PlayStation... But, you know, you had to get what was on PC, you know. My brother and I would just play, like, you know, co-op games, Lego, Lego shit, like, Shining Force, like, Sega. We were obsessed with Sonic. He loved Sonic. I love Knuckles. It's funny, like, yesterday when I went back home, I was looking at, like, this old Acer computer that we used to play on, and I engraved Sonic the Hedgehog on the computer. And, like... I was literally thinking as I walked, I, as I walked past it, I just like, it was in the corner of my eye. And I was like, did I engrave Sonic onto Like, I was like, I didn't see it. And I was like, I was like, do I remember engraving it? Because I remember engraving it. And I looked at it and I was mm. like, I did. I did, <laughs> I did engrave Sonic on that Acer. And um, yeah, we got a PlayStation eventually. That was like a highlight of my youth. PlayStation 2. Like, I mean... That's all our highlights, bro. You know, I mm. think that shit, like, really defined my my youth. Um, I really loved playing PlayStation. And I think, uh, inherently, it also influenced my creative sort of, you know... Um, output. Output. And in consciously and subconsciously. You know, like, every we play the FIFA, mm. you know. You know, like, we're also playing, like... The sly, sly, sly something. What's that game? The I forgot what it's called, but you're like a fox. Sly something. Mm. PlayStation exclusive. Mm. <sighs> Playing like just strange games on PlayStation with my brother. You know, that was that was a lot of the time, you know. And then eventually after PlayStation 2, what do you, what do you think we got after PlayStation 2? <laughs> Xbox 360? Yeah, we got an Xbox. That's usually the route. <laughs> That's Did usually you get the an route. Xbox as well? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I was, I loved Xbox. Bro. I love, and Connect, I oh my your, God. I think it exposed me to the wider internet community in a way as well. Um, you want to know my game attack? I was playing like Xbox Live. What was your game attack at the time? R- Rambo Three five seven zero two. That's crazy. A lot's going off in my mind. Yeah, Rambo three five seven zero two. Where'd that come from? I, I 
I think it was actually just the default one. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't change it. Change it, Because I yeah. thought it was so hard. Mm, 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 Rambo mm. 35702. Yeah. It's kind of like a hard one. I was, For sure. I was really like, oh, dude. And uh, what was my... And my icon was the the orange and black one with the... You know which one? Yes, yes, yes. Like the juggernaut. Yeah. I was... Bro. That was a crazy time, bro. Yeah. That, mm. that exposed me to, like, the wider world. That mm. was, like, the f- I would say the first time I got, in, like, exposed to, like, the wider world. Playing Halo. Oh, my God. I used to play Halo, like, so heavy. I used to play FIFA really heavy. I think I was top 50 mm. in the world in FIFA Street. Mm. <laughs> Fast forward years later, the only FIFA soccer-related thing is that classic... Number 10, Brazil jersey you have. And those old, like, super fly T... T what is it? T90s? The T90s. The T90s. That's unrelated, though. I mean, mm. <laughs> I, I, the, for those who know me, mm. you know, I, people know I still love football. For sure. Um, for sure. Football also is a, also a big influence from my childhood. Mm. Um, if I wasn't going to be wearing this top, I was going to be wearing the 2006 mm. Italy mm. Puma top. Mm. I have it in my suitcase. Mm. Could have worn it today. Mm. I'm obsessed with, like, I was. I was at the time. I'm still obsessed. But mm. as a youth, I was obsessed with like Italian football. Mm. And when we won, that's probably one of the most like distinct memories. As a as as like probably one of the first and most distinct when Italy won in 2006 <laughs> in Germany, because like what. I don't even remember. Also, I a remember lot happened in that mom, game. My mom mm. was in the... In, a lot happened. My <laughs> mom was in the kitchen cooking pizza. Mm. There was fucking Coca-Cola getting poured. Bro, the drama with Zidane. The penalties. I just remember, like, us winning. Mm. And it was it was just... It was bliss, you know. And from... I was just obsessed. Um, one of the first football tops I got... <laughs> Was a Buffon top? Wow, gold, gold Buffon. Yo, that's a legendary individual, bro. That Buffon. Is, just in general, I think he's actually, mm. believe it or not, he's still playing. Of course, he is in the third in the third like, division. So, Buffon, French, French, uh, Francesco Totti. Obviously, mm. that's that's my guy. Mm. Like I would, I would, I, I, I would identify as Francesco Totti mm. as a youth. You know, on the on the pitch, they'll be like, "Who's your guy?" Mm. I'm like. Totti's my guy. Mm. Del Piero, obviously Pirlo. Mm. But that that era of football, yeah, really defined a lot of my, my childhood. My dad put me also, he knew I really liked football. So uh, I was I played for Vitz, actually. People, people don't know that. I played for Vitz with Shanti. That's crazy. Shanti and I played. Uh, Tell people together. who Shanti is, bro. Uh, for those who don't know, it's probably the best rapper in south africa uh best musician to be honest <laughs> can't box him in that yeah. yeah best musician in south africa best best person yeah. in south africa <laughs> like the aura is just indescribable yeah bro. I, I actually miss him a lot mm. i was on the phone with him mm. but shanti and i would play uh, he was he was he was a year below me mm. but we didn't really know each other back then mm. but still and yeah, playing for Vitz until under twelve or something like mm. that. And then I think when I got into high school, I just stopped caring about football. I'll be real with you. I don't know what happened. I think that era was also boring. Mm. Let's be real. That era of football was a bit boring. You know, it was the dominant era of like Bayern Munich. Mm. No offense to Bayern. Munich. Mm. Flowers to the Germans. Flowers. Yeah. <laughs> Flowers to Bavaria. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was there yeah, last month. Yeah, Two months, yeah, you know, I got yeah, people that side. Shout yeah. out to um to the homies Turk. We'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll yeah, get to that. Yeah. Um there that era I stopped, started playing basketball. Um did you play basketball? I didn't. That's, I that's a waste of your height. No, you were, <laughs> you and Osama bin Laden. Bro, can you I tell you bin Laden. I only shot up in height post high school. I was never a tall guy, bro. Damn, I c- if 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 you, I think, when did you shoot up? Like yeah, grade eleven. Like so, why didn't you play in grade eleven? Bro, I'm from Cape Town. Basketball is not a common sport, bro. Like it it would be in like it very like, 
like specific like location, Gordon's Bays, like yeah. Camps Bays, yes, yeah. and like yo, bro, I had no access to that. Yeah, so I feel that. You know, in a in a in a in a j- the same like Brooklyn, you know. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, come the, on now. There ain't Adam Adam Sandler. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So. <laughs> You know what I mean, bro? So it's like, yo, I get that I get that question a lot. So it's like I get where it comes from, but yeah, bro, like sports in general brings people together and I find it amazing that you were able to take to transform the inspiration that you got from sports, football being that into your creative process in a while. Cause I mean, there's so many references from so many different places, bro. And we're gonna speak and touch on a lot during the nature of the conversation, but I think you summed it up. Did you were you were you finished with um I was with Roberto? Done. Yeah, um, I don't think yeah. I was done with Roberto. <sighs> I don't think I was done. So if let me let yeah. me let me, I have to give him. I need to like. I don't think bro. people understand. Really. They don't, bro. Yeah, and if there was a place where I was gonna say mm. it, it should be here. Yeah. But um, first, like laptop I got when I was as as soon as I finished university. Um, he advised me to get a gaming laptop. So I got like an MSI, super huge, like mm. way too big. Mm. You know what I mean? You know those laptops? Yes, like yes, yes. Bro, you know that nigga in the, in the lecture who, hey. who opens it up and then um, it starts like... Um, <laughs> it's a machine. It's a yeah, machine. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he, he told me to get that and I got it. It was a great laptop at the time. And he was on like Photoshop as well and Adobe Suite. So he put me onto that. And oh, dude, because you know, you go from like Pixar on your phone to now like Photoshop and Illustrator. Mm. And he was self taught as well. Mm. But he like showed me mm. a lot of like just, you know, things that you wouldn't learn anywhere, mm. you know, like from a YouTube video. You, you know, like from a classroom, mm. doesn't matter. Like he showed me a lot of things mm. on a design basis. And yeah, I think it it, re- it really like helped me in a skill level, mm. especially, you know, because it's, it's all well and good if you have ideas. Mm. But if you're unable to execute it, mm. what's the point? What's the point? You know, but yeah, he, he, I was talking to him yesterday. He sent me like a crazy discord where it's like just design focus mm. and he sent me like you know he's always sending me like mm. just things about design mm. you know like he sent me like a font pack mm. yesterday like a crazy font pack and i was like shout out to my guy shout yeah. out to, shout out to roberto shout out to roberto Bele. brother <laughs> flowers Bele. eternal flowers brother Bele. Mm. bro that's my stugo as a cosa man did you know that i didn't know that. that's why i was like so drawn to you because of your surname like Bele. Yeah. Bro, take me through those visits by Ogoga and Alexandra, bro. Like, what that does to you, the conversation with your dad about her, just like the ecosystem of her, bro, and her presence, like. So, yeah, my, my, my family, most, most of them still are in Alexandra. Mm. Some, you know, moved to like Soweto. Mm. Uh, what's, that, what's that area? Outside Bramley, you know mm. Bramley. Some I think a lot of people from Alex when they get money, they move to Bramley. Bramley is it yeah. a suburb? It's a suburb, yeah, mm. just outside of Alex. Mm. But you know, when I was younger, you know, my 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 Gogo actually held, my Gogo held the family together. Wow, you know, her house, you know, every anyone could go there. Mm. Everybody in the whole community knew like you can go there if you have a problem you can mm. go to my google because my my grandfather who i'm also named after pego mm. you know that no i my, don't my third name is pego wow so i was named after my grandfather um Nibele from zimbabwe actually so they they had a house you know in alex my grandfather would sell intestines for real yeah chicken intestines or everything anything any any form of intestines in the streets of alex and he would walk every day Mm. like the length uh like 10 kilometers every day my grandfather and i never got to meet him unfortunately he passed away before i was born but 
my father always tells me about my grandfather and you know i think when you're given the name of someone you have to live up to that name mm. and i would like to think that i lived up to mm. what my father intended when he gave me his father's name wow um, my father also says sometimes that i remind he that i remind him of i remind i remind him of what of him what i remind him of his dad his father yeah thank wow. you thank you for that circulation wow but you know cuz he was also tall skinny mm. he had a mustache as well mm. but and he told me actually a story last week Do you want to hear it please so one of the days he used to ride a, a bicycle as well and he he was on the way back and um he he was getting he was just getting going on the way home on his on his bike and then there were these gangsters who like drove in front of him and then tried to shoot him and they shot they shot they missed but he managed to get away and then he was connected to obviously like people in his community were, that were also within like gang affiliations mm. but he wasn't gang affiliated mm. but they were trying to rob him mm. so not not on some gang thing mm. um and then from that day um <laughs> he carried um <laughs> a brick <laughs> <laughs> in a paper bag in his <laughs> jacket just as protection just as protection damn what yeah. a noble man may may he be granted the highest place in paradise yeah no but mm. he was he was he was like the story from the stories because you know there's so many stories which my father said about so, him mm. but my grandmother like i said she held my family together mm. and after she passed i would say you know this was 2 years ago uh 4 5 years ago okay yeah after she passed away I would say like a lot of things sort of you know connections started falling apart in the family. in the family mm. you know which is which is sad but um that goes to show what like one person can do matriarch can do what a matriarch can do mm. you know what a what a black matriarch can do mm. i mean that's that's like you know the glue Mm. within everyone and yeah she 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 would actually call me her husband wow yeah she say oh my husband wow <laughs> she say oh my husband pego and even to the point when she cuz she passed away in our home in my father's house um she would she was you know i, I don't know if, when you when you're old and you're sick mm. you start hallucinating mm. and, you know she actually thought i was like him wow it was um you know it was it was it was, it was obviously sad but also because it's like it's it's sad it's sad to see your your granny in like a state like that but mm. also like for her to feel some sort of comfort you mm. know i hope i hope she felt some for, like form of comfort mm. thank you for sharing my brother mm. um where does the islam part come in a lot of people are confused about that i think <laughs> we are <laughs> um mm. w- i think people think i'm like indian mm. some some people think i'm like mixed with indian mm. um so my father converted to islam uh in the township mm. when he was like 20 so like how a missionary the missionaries go through the the township township yes uh in islam is a jamaat mm. jamaat goes through the township mm. and my father you know he decided this is what what he wanted mm. and it's interesting you know because it's like there's no like direct connection to it mm. but you know it's it, he decided this is this is what i feel you know mm. connects with me because you know in the township um there wasn't a lot of like hope mm but he was also very i think he, yeah he 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 is rather he's very inspired by um obviously Malcolm X mm. 
Um, Stokely Carmichael. I don't know mm. if you know Stokely Carmichael. Mm -hmm. um, so these were like black Muslim um, activists. And um, yeah, not a nation, not a, not a nation of Islam, but, mm. but Islam. You mm. know what I mean? And mm. That's a lot of what I when I was young, I was reading like Malcolm X, which which was which is a good thing to read, but I was way too militant for like a grade four. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They were like, "Who are your heroes?" As like a, people were saying, um, "Didier Drogba, mm. um, um, Hannah Montana." Mm. I was like. Malcolm, Malcolm X. X. <laughs> Damn, that's powerful. Yeah, but you know, uh, that's that's how it happened. And my mother, when you met my mother, she converted to Islam. And when I was born, I was born into Islam. Yeah. Okay, beautiful, bro. Um, then let's fast forward to post high school, um, first year. First year, um, this is where you, you know, trying to find yourself like in the creative arts and you're also trying to find yourself as a human, like as a man, as a young man becoming in, you know, country like South Africa. Um, I've been thinking about clarity versus confidence a lot. And I wanted to hear what your definition of clarity is and what your definition of confidence is. Um, I think for me, well, not for me, like I'm posing this question because there's a lot of young people like us who are forced in positions to be confident, but without clarity. Um, and it happens, it happens at this stage of our lives when we sort of like figuring out what we're going to do for the, like, you know, seasons that's awaiting upon us because our parents are getting older. we becoming older. We're seeing the, like, we're seeing the world for what it is and we're seeing things for what it is. So I think that clarity versus confidence thing is something that I've been thinking about a lot and I wanted to hear your take on it. It's, it's interesting that you, you say, you use those specific words, you know, clarity confidence um obviously they go in tandem and also it goes the other way around i think people also have clarity but then they don't have co confidence some, some people don't yes have, yes have confidence but a lot of the time it has a lot to do with who's around you like the people around you and who your who the role models are and m probably most important like what is the goal like what what is the goal um being able to set short term goals and long term goals you know cuz if you have that idea of this is what i'm striving to do and it informs both ways then everything will sort of come into place you know what i'm saying um getting a phone call who's calling me my neighbor at home <laughs> i'm sorry i'm not at home right now but um oh my goodness yeah my neighbor so i think it goes in that direction of saying i'm gonna set a short-term goal or a long-term goal and they inform each other you know and having the people around you to support that goal. And those people around you will only support the goal if they see that you're passionate about it. You know what I mean? Like, it really goes both ways. To be like, I see that, I see that bro. Like, he really cares about that thing. He really cares about that thing. I think that's, that's like broke. You know, people, people see that they care. You know, like, people care. And, Beyond it being dope, it's like I see that there's that sense of sincerity. I see it, so I want to be a part of that. You know, a lot of it, a lot of it, the time it's like I want to be a part of the community, and I want to support because that's the shit. The people that I find most inspiring are the people that, regardless of how much attention they're getting, they just keep on doing their thing. 
I think we spoke about this before. You know, that thing of it doesn't matter how many eyes are on me. It doesn't matter how much attention I'm getting. It doesn't matter if my shit's popping right now. I'm going to keep on doing it regardless. And if you can just keep on doing it, the confidence will also come, I think, personally. It's a beautiful answer, bro. How do you describe Frenosonic's responsibility to global culture? That's a good question. Um, uh, wow. Frenosonic is mostly a reflection of my interests and the things I care about and the people I care about and creating a sense of community around that. I think I've said about, I've spoken about it before, but I just don't want, I don't want it to be just be something cool, you know, because something that's cool can fade away. You know what I mean? Something that's cool now might not be cool next month. In the magazine I was reading earlier, they were talking about trends and they were talking, this was a 1998 magazine and they were talking about 70s trends. Mm. They were So they were actively saying, these 70s trends, 70s trends are going in, these 70s trends are going out. They were mm. like, um, calf skin is going out, rhinestones are coming in. Mm. And I was like, yo? Mm. Like talking about this, they were talking about this then. Mm. You know what I mean? Obviously it was an active conversation. Mm. Mm. But it's like being able to see that things change and you have to also change and being able to set something up that will outlast mm. the cool, you know, cause even if it is cool, I think it should be monumental, mm. you know, and stand that time, stand the test of that time and look, be looked back on and be like, regardless of, 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 of the context that was dope, you know. I think you've hit it on the nail there, bro. You summed it up quite beautifully in relation to something being monumental and going past the cool. I think one of my favorite Frenosonic outputs or pieces definitely has to be the collaboration you did with Tebe Magugu at the Kimberley Primary School. I think what that encapsulated it, it it almost felt like a very like nostalgic uh, South African toddler or young child kind of feeling that everyone can relate to, and the way the way I found it fascinating the way high f- I think what okay this might be because everybody endures struggle in a similar way but I'm trying to organize my thought in in a sense. I'm trying to organize my statement in a, in a way that it doesn't like um, um, go derail the left side. But what I'm trying to say is that I find I find it interesting that like um, Tebe Magugu's offerings, which is obviously high fashion, sort of like merged with a South African reality, which is obviously like education, basic education, merging with a a current form of expression which is your perspective coming together centered like in making something that's firstly centered like around community um secondly that speaks of a south african nature and just i don't know bro like i can go on and on rambling about it but take me through the experience that you had with uteba in kimberley and with those kids it was it was really a different perspective you know it gave me like a completely different perspective um i got called up by tebe and i think this was after i had done the extracurricular shoot so amazing by the way mm, yeah, that was dope but he was like yo want to do this community thing I was like, yeah, I got my camera, let's, let's go, you know. And being that side, I'd never been to Kimberley before. I don't think I'd ever actually been to 
the Northern Cape before. You've been to the Northern Cape. I haven't. Okay. And um, it was so remote, you know, like the the city, you know. So it's just like a little island. Mm. And then around the island is like the townships mm. and stuff. And the, the school was in the township. Mm. And all these kids, they're just like normal kids, you know. Mm. And I'm like, it was the last day of school as well. Mm. <laughs> so I don't, you know how the last day of school Bro. energy is. People, mm. the kids do not care. care. Like, they're just there for vibes. Mm. They're just vibes. I'm like, these vibes are crazy. Mm. Last day of school vibes. Mm. They should turn that into a cologne. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's last crazy. Day <laughs> last day of school. Yo, that's a powerful concept. <laughs> uh, uh. But yeah, it, it was it was those type of vibes. And there was, um, obviously, Tebe was now donating like masks, masks and there was other things as well which weren't publicized you know which were being donated but i was there to document it and create the story of it and the kids there were like really just inspiring because they were just they just wanted to have a good time they really just wanted to have a good time and i think it also kind of took me back a bit because I hadn't been in a school, mm. like in a school setting for like a couple of years. Mm. So just to see like the kids, you know, just want to like, just want to do their thing. You know, the naughty kids over there mm. trying to start some trouble. All, you know, the girls which are like, you know, like mm. in the corner, like in their groups, in their posses, like looking at the boys. Mm. And, da -da 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 -da. Mm. and I'm just there, you know, it was weird. for It was actually quite weird for me because <laughs> I was like, I thought about myself when I was in school and about like the school photographer mm. and essentially that I was like a school photographer. I was <sighs> full circles. It was like, but you know, when I saw that school photographer, like mm. I was like, that man's lame as hell. Uh, he's, like a, he's like a white kid. Uh, not white kid. He's like a white, white man. man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, boring ass. Mm. Imagine like a kid sees, like saw me and it's like, that's, that's kind of rad. I want to do what that guy's doing. Wow. You know what I mean? That's wow. that's like an interesting thing. Mm. And, you know, uh, it was just nice to talk to them. There was mm. a kid there that had this, like, bicycle with, like, boom boxes. Mm. I was like, what? That's crazy. <laughs> he made, like, the bicycle and had boom boxes in the front. I was like, that is insane. Mm. And, yeah, we shot that. It was really cool. Mm. Um, I got to meet Tebe's family as well. Went to Tebe's home. Wow. It was um, it was a great experience. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Northern Cape is different. It is. It's very different. We, we definitely, I need to make a plan to get out there. Can't call myself a South African if I haven't touched all the no. nine <laughs> provinces. You get me though? Or maybe that's just my way of seeing no, things. No, you have to. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. yeah. To, I think South Africa is huge. Damn. Really huge. Bro. <laughs> They're not even lighter note. You hit us with an IG filter called the Frenosonic flip phone. You have Abu K. Trenada taking selfies. You have us getting ready in the morning. Actually, the way to bag on myself, I need to share this filter. Bro, how did that come about, bro? Like, how does a kid from South Africa, Joburg, like, have a make a filter? Let go, this goes back Genesis to you and Roberto fascinating about PCs. Then you getting your own MSI. Now you're making filters. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. Walk me through that. <laughs> uh, so I literally, I just had an idea for a filter. I mean, the actual story is that I, you know, Skillshare. The um, this is not sponsored by Skillshare. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of Skillshare. You know Skillshare. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I got um. But if you want to sponsor it, you know. <laughs> Think about it, Skillshare. Holla at your boy. Holla, holla, holla at your boy. I'm saying you sponsor this show. <laughs> okay, but anyway, I got a subscription, like mm. a month subscription, like a free month. And I didn't use it. Like, I completely forgot about it. And then the month ended. And then I had to pay. And I had to pay, like, for the subscription. And I was like, fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was pissed. Yeah. But I was like, now I need to learn something. Now I, need, I have to learn something because mm. I'm paying for this mm. bullshit. And I was like, 
I want to learn how to make a filter, mm. make filters, learn how to use Spark AR. Mm. And yeah, I did like a course once, like once every two days I'd do a lesson. And eventually I was like proficient in making like filters. Like the, the software for filters is like, I always compare it to like Photoshop. You, mm. know, if you see if you, once you know how to use it, it's mm. not that complicated. Mm. And I had this idea of the, um, the first one I made, which is the most popular one, is the camcorder one. Mm. Um, I just had an idea. That was obviously, that was the introduction, the camcorder. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it made sense for who I was. Uh, yeah. I'm not coming with this shit from mm. nowhere. You know? mm. And I had made so many different like prototypes mm. of... Um, like the I started because I literally had to take photos of the camera and... Mm. I made so many different prototypes because wow. I, I, I was like, which camera would work best? Mm, you know, because mm. I all everything was from me. Mm. You know, like the images, and I would say that that first that first filter was the genesis. I made the f that genre. Wow. I made that genre of filters of um, you're looking through something, you're looking at something through something. Mm. I created that genre of filters. So if you see any filters like that. I was the first person who did it. Damn. Uh, Talk well, your shit, OG. <laughs> <laughs> but that, um, that filter was, I thought that first one was probably, in my opinion, still, still probably my most impressive one. Mm. You know, it's crazy when you like do your first one and mm. it's the most impressive one. Mm, mm. What was great about it was like, ugh, it was so integrated. Like the um, background, mm. we had a Gaussian blur. Mm. So it was like slightly blurred. But then when you when you moved with the camera, there would be a motion blur on the actual subject. On not on the subject, but on the on the camcorder to give you like the like the the vision of something of like the movement. Movement. That's crazy, bro. Flowers to you for that, bro. Like yeah. you're a powerhouse, my brother. And this conversation is for us to do that reflective note. Yeah. Just like giving Genesis to where it started and the foundational moments, which is family, um, transcending into amazing collaborations, transcending into you creating things of your own just based of your imagination. Mm. And it's, it's, it's a really inspirational sight to see. And with that being said, boom, Natal feature number one, boom, Natal feature number two. Like in the midst of that, like this personal growth, there's opportunities residing outside of what you're doing with Fanasonic. But at that time, did you know that like your stance of this like creative culture was going to be uniquely known for you having a very like vintage take or because um, also when we see your perspective, we can sort of tell that, OK, there's a lot of inspiration drawn for so many from so many different mixed media you know but you obviously use this franasonic channel to you know channel all these different things i say natal feature number two natal feature number number one and number two and then the iconic shanti franasonic t um I, I mentioned a lot of things in this question but i think my question is then now okay the ideas are becoming tangible now and the audience is growing and you need to speak on that what was those conversations like at the time it was a lot of just experimenting and just getting out there, really just trying something. Mm, going back to that thing of trying something out, it working, not working, but genuinely just trying it out. Um, the Natal feature, mm. like, which is like my first like editorial feature, um, I literally just emailed people. Like I, was like, I remember I had, an, I had the idea um, while I was on the toilet. Oh. Of course. Yeah. And I was like, as soon as I got the idea, like I rushed to my laptop that same night and I emailed everyone that I could. Mm. I emailed like ID. I, I emailed Dazed. Mm. I emailed anyone. I was Googling, going on Twitter, mm. trying to find people's contacts. I was, mm. you know, I was, I was really, I was sending it out there. Mm. And um, Natal was like, yo, would like to see what, See what you could do, mm. and I took it upon myself, you know, to to just complete this project. Mm. And that first project, like Muslim Muslims, um, 
or oh, mashallah rather mm. that was the title the the project about like the different sort of individuals that are in the sort of south african diaspora of mm. islam you know it it started as a conversation between me and my friend aziz mm. in johannesburg and uh, cuz we had just like taken photos of him mm. in front of the mosque in Fitas mm. in that's Frida Dorp. Mm. And we just had I had these images and I was like Aziz <laughs> it's that and we also just put Aziz in context. He's Jamaican um South African Indian Muslim there's something else in there but I saw like all these different like you know dichotomies coming together and i was like that's so interesting mm. you know he's not the regular the regular sort of idea of what people think when they think of a muslim in south mm. africa i realized that how people see muslims in south africa was just indian mm. and colored mm. right yeah true story you know so also coming from me mm. you know, given my background mm. of islam i was like I never felt like comfortable, mm. you know, in going to mosque a lot of the time when I was younger because mm. I was so different, mm. you know. And now I'm even more different. Mm. Like I go there with my dreads, but I'm confident. Mm. You know, I'm confident in mm. who I am. And I would hate for like these young black kids, you know, especially like the young black kids to feel like, you know, they not as worthy as Muslims, mm. you know, or whatever, mm. you know. Or even like for sexuality, mm. for gender, for all that, you know. Mm. And I'm happy that it's a growing conversation. Mm. I'm happy that it's a conversation that's grown over time, and people are. I think people are seeing, you know, mm. people are seeing that love is love is comes in different forms. Religion comes in different forms. Uh, it all just translates differently. Everything translates differently, and. Um, that also goes with our art, you know, the way that we sort of communicate our art, how people receive our art, who's willing to publish our art. And that's how I was r- willing to publish my work at that point. And that was a great start for me. And I'm very grateful to, to Helen and everyone at Natal. I'm actually going to be, I'm actually in the new print. The um, one that featured in... The V&A, Victoria, and Albert Museum in London. Yes. Yes. Flowers to Fran, Fran for featuring there. Flowers to Broke for featuring there. Flowers to Asa Sadan, Luka Nyom Dingi, Rich Nisi, Tebe. Um, yo, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. You see, that's the, 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 the just, I don't want to mention people. This shout out Nick. Shout out Nick. Yeah. Yeah, no. Shout out Nick. My brother, I want to get into maybe a derail away from the work conversation a bit um i want to speak about um love i find it really magical that like in an ecosystem of like what our society deems today that like love is obviously not possible and like it's not a real thing because obviously the music we listen to the playboy cardies of the world the young nudies i mean flowers to them like because they really like let us in our trap element flowers to hendrix too but i think my question really stems from like where do you where do you like how does friend how does francesco love bro like what does love mean to you what sensitivity consideration attentiveness do you think helps us as young men as creators who are very emotional beings um transcend or rather um yeah bro i'm not saying all of these things because you figured it out no, no, it's um, a conversation it's a conversation yeah. yeah 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 i would i would say like mm. it's about being real with yourself mm. it's really about being real with yourself mm. and uh, r- knowing that love comes in so many different forms mm. you know um yo know, i i know that it's easy to sort of it's easy to fall in love 
And I wouldn't say that you fall out of love. I would just say that love changes. Mm. You know, love is like a constant change mm. in friendships, in relationships, in your family. Mm. You know, I, I personally, I think um, my my love language is being able to be passionate. You know what I mean? When mm. someone shows passion mm. in something, like I, I'm so attracted to it. You mm. know what I mean? I'm attracted to that, like, because you really care about mm. something. You know, you really, you're invested in it, and I can see you actively trying to do something. And mm. I, I love that. That's that's my love language. And mm. If you're passionate about how much you love me, mm. you know, that's dope. I love that. You know, and it comes in small ways, but being truthful with yourself is the is the realest. Mm. You know? What uh, what did uh, was it Erica Badu? You know, uh, Black Thought on um, from the Roots. Mm. You know, a great song. Mm. You know, you got me. The mm -mm. Song you got me. Um, what are what are the words that? Captivated you, bro. Clear my throat. Yeah. <laughs> but um, who, Erica Badu's on the on the chorus. Chorus. It's a great song, um, and it's from the Things Fall Apart album. Mm. And she goes um, something about along the lines of it doesn't matter. <laughs> Baby, don't worry. You know that you got me. Something along the lines of that. You know, something about like it doesn't matter who I'm with. Mm. It doesn't matter where I am. Just know that like you got me. Mm. You know, and that's how love is. Mm. And then Black Thought goes in, and he's like, um, the person who could be telling you things about how your love is, like mm. the person that you smoke weed with. The person who you you share in a two piece chicken mm. sandwich with, they can tell you whatever about your love, mm. but it doesn't matter mm. because it's like it's between you mm. and this other person in mm. whatever form. You mm. know what I mean? So, like whenever that conversation we were having mm. last week, mm. it's about all these things are being said, mm. but until you actually sit down and talk with the person mm. it's like that's the only time you get the reality mm. so that's why i say like it's about being real not only with yourself but with the the person other people involved you know like a great movie i watched the other night francis ha i don't know if you've seen it before i haven't it's a great movie and that movie it's about this greta gerwig and um, she's in New York and she's has a best friend and she's staying in like this apartment and it's not perfect, but they're like really, really close friends and they do everything together. But then the best friend wants to move out to another place and mm. the friendship changes. Mm. The friendship changes, the love changes. Mm. And then Greta moves in with these two guys as well and she starts loving like them you know what mm. I mean? like she she spends all the time with them mm. and, uh, and that love is like different to how it was the previous love was, mm. it was still still love you know what mm. i mean and then after that she can't afford to pay the rent so then she goes back to university to mm. and then she's by herself you know mm. and it's kind of like her you know figuring out the love for herself again mm. and then somewhere along the line she goes to paris for two days by herself mm. and she does nothing but yeah it's a great movie damn has the has the journey for how's the journey for self-love been for you bro mm, i think i just try to stay real with myself again like i said and that honesty is brutal hey eh? it is brutal it's it's very mm. brutal you gotta be you gotta be real with yourself when you know like you're fucking up or, mm. you know you're not doing enough. You need to be, you need to care for yourself. You know, mm. right? like if you're not doing enough for yourself, you'll know, you'll know somehow. Mm. And, um, I would say that it is, it is just 
some form of journey. Mm. But find the things that you care about, that you're passionate about, and it doesn't matter what other people say. But you need to, you need to handle the. You need to nurture those things because those are you, the things that you care about. Mm. You know, my brother cares about video games, mm. and no one can tell him shit. Mm. Um, I've started getting into building terrariums. You mm. know what I mean, and the attention that I give it will. That's the only way I'll be able to see it foster into mm. growth. Mm. And it goes into everything. Mm. Whether we're talking about love, mm. again, whether we're talking about creative work, mm. it's just about giving yourself enough space in your mental plane. Mm. Like I need to, I need to do that. Mm. I need to give it some time. Mm. And time heals everything, bro. Um, that's that's powerful. Thank you for sharing, my brother. Um, I think you've lately you've evolved into a position where you're becoming a tie and a figure that brings people together in very indescribable ways. And the most recent like endeavor is obviously you working for Banele Koza. Um I want to speak about, was it ever part of the plan to be part of a South African fine art ecosystem? One, Second, how has the inception of you being a part of that? Firstly, flowers to Banele. Like we can, we, we can, you can obviously to like you know um, elaborate on that. And second, how is this? How would you describe your responsibility being in a in the space you're in and the places you're going and the information and insight you incurring? Um, yeah, my brother. Please take me through that. So I studied urban design. Of course. And uh, at Fitz. Mm. And I graduated in 2020. Uh, after I graduated, I didn't, I didn't work. I haven't worked in the formal field of urban planning mm. and design. Mm. But I've utilized the skills that I've learned. Mm. And I was freestyling. Freestyling. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. I was, was free, freestyling, free, free la- freelancing. freelancing. Yeah, um, <laughs> for the longest time, mm. you know. Mm. And um, <laughs> it it was it was good, you know. Being, mm. I think it was definitely good that I was um, in that space, you know, of freelancing and be able being able to do my own thing, especially straight after university. Because also in that freelancing, you experimenting. I experiment exactly. I don't think you know, Panasonic would have expanded the way it would have if I was working a job at the time. Of course, to be honest, but I started Panasonic when I was still in university mm, as well, mm, 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 mm. which is which was a twenty twenty. Mm. But anyway. Um, Banele Cosa. Banele Cosa. Um, first, tell the people who that individual is. First, so BK. BK. I had been going to the gallery in Bramfontein um, since I was in university. Obviously, but so I would just walk walk down and I'd see the studio, and the person that I knew from BK is a gallery was Kensani, Kensani Murray. And that's a very good friend of mine. Mm. One of my best, f- closest friends. Mm. Um, one of the sweetest people, to True. be honest. True. Kensan is a sweet yeah. Yeah. I would li- So I would walk past mm. the gallery and I'd always see him doing some some crazy shit. And I, was like, I would just walk inside, you know. And at that time, I was just so young. So I'd just be like, I would ask questions, you know. I'd ask Kenny all these questions. And you'd have answers for me. You would have answers for mm. me. But he always took me so seriously you know mm. what i mean like kenny always like treated me with a a sense of reverence you know even though i was still in university he was like always like your work is so world class and i was like i don't know i'm just doing this shit. he w- but he saw something in me which mm. which was something i couldn't even see wow and um so he was working at bkz and by the time i was living in rosebank um, 
I'll be going to the every gallery opening. You know what I mean? Um, talking to the team, you know. And what what I realized before I even started working for the gallery was that there's a community around BKZ. So even if you don't work there, you can you're like part of the community. Even if mm. you're not an artist, you're part of that community. Just being there for the opening just being there for the openings, just being able to walk down the street, mm. take a seat with the with 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 the people who are working there and with with Papi and Mankebe and Guanele and if Panele was there as well, you know, and I always I would say <laughs> every time there was an opening, I was like dressed crazy. I'll be real. Mm. I was always dressed I was always dressed. I always mm. came with like a like a really great outfit. Mm. And um I think um I would leave it it left an impression mm. on Banele and um at the time when when Kensani was leaving the gallery I was like oh I kind of want to you know slot in and at mm. that point an opportunity had closed for me wow. I had been applying for a certain opportunity and it didn't work out but then this one kind of got presented to me in a weird way and I don't know. I, I, I don't know what I. Would, this is the best job I could honestly ask for, being, you know, a curator, um, being able to talk t- and communicate and meet so many different individuals from collectors, to also obviously the artists, to just random people walking across the road, and. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful that I got this opportunity. I got the opportunity, got the chance, you know. And uh, yeah, it's 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 honestly one of those things where it's like I I didn't settle. Mm. You know, there was there was other chances for me to. This was my first job, mm. you know, and I didn't settle. I was these other jobs which 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 were offered to me at the time didn't make sense. Mm. But working at the gallery has expanded the way I thought, think, has mm. expanded the way that I present my work, mm. you know. Um, and, yeah, I don't think it would have happened if I wasn't, I don't think I would have, I would be in this mental state if it wasn't for working at the gallery. <laughs> How was your recent travels, bro, uh, with the gallery? It was, it was amazing. I don't even know what to say, to be honest. I know it was my first time leaving the country as well. Mm. Um, we went to Paris, and Paris is everything that people say, everything that the fairy tales mm. <laughs> say, everything that the streetwear blogs and the mm. fairy tales say, say. That it is. Mm. It's, it's it. Paris is it. Mm. It's vibrant. Mm. It has an energy. The people... Uh, the people just do them, you know mm. what I mean. I, when I was there, I was like, I'm gonna do me, you know what I mean. Mm. Uh, what's that song? Don't be mad, <laughs> you know. <laughs> people are just being mm. themselves, mm. and you feel it. Mm. And I was like, I want to be myself. Mm. You know, I was always myself, you mm. know? but now I'm like, I see a place where you don't really, you don't get judged for being yourself. Mm. And I was very lucky to be there in the summer as well. We were there with you. Fire your stories. We were living with I think I was, I was quite <laughs> visceral. Yeah, yeah. We were stories. living through it through your stories. Like really good. Niggas were in Paris. For True. Real. <laughs> and, and, the, and, mm. and my favorite part about Paris was just walking around. Mm. You know, walking around the streets because it's so different. Mm. You know, and thank you, like, to everyone that helped me out. Mm. Like, first day I arrived, I went to the, the cost Roland Garros party. Yeah, and I was like, I didn't know anyone there. Mm. I literally knew nobody there. But then I see this homie, and he looks cool. He mm. reminds me of Shanti, actually, mm. my friend Shanti. And I'm like, yo, bro, what's good? And he's like, yo, da, 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 da. we start a conversation, and like we relate to each other. He's from Brazil. Wow. You know? I feel like Brazil, South Africa, there's a link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thainan Costa, mm. that's the homie. Shout out to him. Skater from Brazil. He introduced me to all his friends, and then as the night progressed, people started approaching me. You wow. know what I mean? I was wearing the Keith hat, mm. the giant mm. green mm. Keith mm. hat. Mm. People were obsessed with that hat. Mm. People, <laughs> I would say 
travel tip have a conversation starter as like a object as like a object of piece of clothing mm. have some form of conversation starter and if you travel overseas don't wear <laughs> branded clothes like don't mm. wear don't wear the stc <laughs> sweatsuit cuz mm. everybody got that stc mm. wear the mzanzi swag that's beautiful that cuz that will set you apart that look wear, wear that tebe mm. wear that rich mm. wear that, that keith you know wear that fransonic mm. cuz that shit is they don't got it mm. you know what i mean they probably can get it mm. if they wanted to but mm. nobody's rocking it like that mm. and it will it will just set you apart beautiful bro um that's amazing um until we until we touch paris as friends we will just like work hard and entirely to get I'm there but it's coming let's, go let's year. Year. why not <laughs> yeah i'm saying december <laughs> paris for december okay it's a bit it's, too cold. yeah you're right cuz also there's no like you can go anywhere in the world there's no december like in zanzi true speaking of zanzi and the colorful emblems we have from a personality and a group point of view ebum nandini yeah what a concept um i caught my first ebum nandini in the month of my birthday actually i took a surprise trip to joburg just to come feel the energy also a lot was happening that weekend genesis ebum nandini so many beautiful things um and i think i've 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 always been a a student of the ecosystem from afar but to experience it in person was like obviously like a different um a different feeling um i was introduced to ebum nandini maybe the first time you guys did the the engine mock up like poster which was done by your brother roberto yeah, my brother. Like yo that's guys we all you're going to hear that name throughout the conversation bro take me through Ebum Nandini dog like um I know it's a south it's Lenzo is the home is from Steve Pop I don't know who else is also part of the camp um the merge with Boiler Room Prime bro like talk about it I w- I would just say it's really just this, it's it's a space for like the flyers the mm. flyers kids mm. Like say that line again, bro. It's like the space for the flyers, kids. Like powerful. my God, like powerful. These kids are slyer than me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had that's crazy. You had your party. These kids are slyer than you. Damn. Like, what? I think you know. Pa- you know. <laughs> <laughs> when we when we started it, when I, when I was brought, so stiff pup, stiff pup originally started it in Cape Town. Mm. and um they had a um, idea for mm. a party in Joburg mm. and at that point i was throwing thrift parties and mm. it was weird mm. i was throwing like parties where we were selling like second hand clothes and shit but like, it was like popping those mm. parties were popping like the venue like mm. we, I don't know. Do you remember that Tebe Wanda party? Yeah. So I was throwing the thrift parties over there. Crazy. <laughs> That's a rooftop, right? It's um it's actually more like a pavilion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's like a it's like a architectural masterpiece. Wow. But at that point that was like those were events I was throwing. Mm-hmm. They saw the graphic design, creative direction, mm. the, and communications that I was doing. And also just the vibe that I was mm. doing. And I loved um Jakinda mm. and Ayema. Mm. from Cape Town. Mm. And um they were like, "Yo, let's do this thing." Mm. First party we did was the it was around the the what's it the political elections. Mm. So we did the theme around the mm. parties, like parties. Mm. I was EFF. Mm. Jakinda was DA mm. and Ayema was ANC. Wow. And that was our first party at Bull Kitchener's. And um Yeah, from there, Kitchener's it, is a crazy place, eh? It is. If those walls could talk, that's a that's, yo, haram, bro, <laughs> <laughs> fully, yeah, yeah. But we won't get into of all course, of that. Of yeah, course, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> But that's where it started. Mm. From there, it's always about themes, you know. And you know, <laughs> I would say like we think that themes are like a new thing, but it's actually old school. Mm. like having a themed party is like an old school mm. vibe. Mm. And from there again, it's like uh we did the what's the Steve Harvey show. Mm. 
What's it? The Family Feud. Family Feud, yeah. Family Feud. And that was back to back. All the DJs were back to back. Oh, and crazy. then we did the engine, Ebum Nandim. Yo. How crazy was that video? Yo. The one of the, the dancing. Bro. With the, who, with the, with, I did, I put the edit, the first one of um, Special, not Special Affair, Tia Tamara, and also of Abra. Um, yeah, that was, that was a great party. And then we started, we did Nollywood, Nollywood Night. And most recently, uh, then we started our subcategory of ETV, which are like the smaller parties. And most recently, uh, rather, um, Culture and Couture, which is the, I guess, cross-pollination of fashion and the party scene. Uh, leather, the leather venue, the leather situation was great. This past weekend, we did the mm. denim edition. Mm. That was That was insane. Bro, I was like looking at the stories. I was like, ah, the that denim, the mm. denim was crazy, mm. and um, I think it's also about just finding alternative ways to mm. market your parties. Because mm. just posting a poster ain't gonna do it no more, buddy. You know, so you, when when we do like our bigger parties, we we actually try and do like shoots with the artists. Because it brings like a sense of worth, mm. you know what I mean, to the artist. Instead of like, an artist is less likely to post the old post stock it. image mm. of themselves, you know. But if you put the time into shoot new stuff for them, they'll post it and they'll be happy to post it. At the same time, they have more press, they have new press photos, mm. which they can mm. just use. Mm. So in that way, it's like just building the community, you know, around us. And you are, bro. Mm. Um, those parties are super memorable yeah i think also beyond the parties it's like i said all the community the mm. communication around mm. it probably my favorite rollout what's your favorite rollout that you can remember engine bro engine yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i only would that was a little hard for me to think about like engine yeah okay my, mine is mine is nollywood nollywood was iconic yeah because we shot like the um, the lens or the the fake. yeah yeah like, th- that was a uh, that was crazy. And you know, that party, actual actual party, was actually actually giving like Nigerian vibes. Like was, hardcore. Beyond like the way that people like looked and dressed, mm, mm. it was so low budget. And mm, like, <laughs> like not a lot of effort was... And uh, there was effort. Like you can see someone really, like in terms of the interiors and stuff, mm, but mm, it was mm. like, things were like the flags. We had flags, like African flags all over. We had like, cheap vinyl stick-ons That's of crazy. like the Ebum Randi. Yeah. Like the vinyl was like peeling off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I, I, I love the Nollywood nights. Mm. Um, but Engine, yeah. Yo, bro. A shout out to Lenzo, man. Shout out to Lenzo. Yeah, for, yeah everybody mm. knows mm. about Lenzo. Truly. Um, yeah. My and brother, is there... You shout out Stiff Pop. Shout out Jakinda Nayama. That's family. That's family for Al. Um, now I just... Right now, I just want to take the moment to say thank you, bro, for opening a window in what resides in your I mind. I landed today. You landed today, bro. Landed like, today. Um, and it's like so crazy that this happened because like we were meant to schedule it for some time later. But I guess divine timing, you just can't, you know, you can't question it. You just have to fall into it. Um, bro, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much for sharing. We are absolutely blessed to live in a time where we get to see your creative expression um i want you to know that like you inspire me so much you inspire all of us so much and your perspective is truly important um when i think of ranasonic i think of and when i think of when i think of all of us i think in my mind we are the new we like the new generation of like what sarafina students were like so easy them as youth Mm. We're about to travel the world for the first time. We're living, we're living our lives centered around chasing dreams. Like, it's incredible. Um, and you, one of those melting pots, you one of those individuals who's, you know, created a space or world that we can call our own, you know? And that's important, bro. Continue and um, keep on keeping on, bro. Mm, you, know, you know how I feel about you. I Damn. don't even say. <laughs> I brought you some flowers. Wow. On wow. the way here. Thank you so much, my brother. This is such a sweet gesture. Wow. I was walking on the way here. And wow. I was like, I You're such a gentleman, bro. Like, you're a lover for real. Like, 
you don't understand. What are these? These are roses, right? White yeah, roses. they are white roses. Yeah. I think um, white roses represent peace. Mm. You know? So, Ish. this keeps the flowers flying Thank you, high. bro. Thank you. Can I <laughs> greet you properly now? Like, yeah. yeah. 